Okay, that should start YouTube now. Okay, just uh, uh, see if YouTube starts. Should start now. Okay, yeah, it's running now. Wow, that's uh, terrible that you get interrupted like that. Timestamp, 52 minutes. <clears throat> okay, so, okay, we're back on YouTube. Okay, YouTube is up, back. Okay, that's awful. Okay, th thank you for speaking up fast. Thank you for speaking up fast. Even if YouTube is down, you can actually still make a comment, I believe, on YouTube. So anyway, back to, back to what I'm saying here. So th th you, ha you must, this is when you're trying to make two identities on the internet, you got to make sure that the other identity is not matched to the old identity in some way, like a business name, uh, an address. Uh, you know, uh, matching first name may not be a big issue because there's too many people with the same, same name. But uh, certainly don't match last names. Uh, anything that could be narrowing down the, the list to a few, like a page full of Google search, you don't want that. So anything that will match it in a, you know, easily in Google search is going to be a bad thing. So don't use anything as an identifier. So if you have a business name, don't ever mention it on the other social media. You have to really think about this. And some of you, I have to tell you what some of the problem is. Some of you actually think you're being a fake person, that you're being, uh, um, you're not being genuine by by hiding behind a fake name, that that it's uh, ludicrous to be, you know, identifying with a fake name, uh, and on and on and on. It, a lot of you just, you know, you're from the Midwest and you don't think like that. You you, you just don't, you just don't think like that. Uh, uh, don't, don't confuse the issue, Kelp. There, uh, uh, Obviously, uh, if doxing is uh, illegal, then the, the entire company of Palantir should be in jail. Okay? If doxing is illegal, then uh, Google should be in jail. Okay? Because those companies are, you know, the doxers. That's what those companies exist for. Hello, I'm a, I'm a hater. So, anyway... So the uh, you do this is this is uh, LG night. It this is part of the problem. It, it's the psychological thing that I got to break here. Some of you, especially if you're from a you know a culture that you know you 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 don't you feel like you don't want to ever have a fake identity. That it's very difficult to make that jump and say I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna have a different identity. I, I you you can't hack that. Uh, because really what you have to do, especially if you have a business with your name on it, is you have to make two separate identities. You actually have to think of them as two separate people. You actually have to think about this planet overnight. Don't just make this change overnight. You really have to think about it because you have to act the role. Act the role. Hey, Raylene is still here. Uh, act the role, guys, of what your other identity is versus your real identity. So in a way they won, they, they force you to dip your toe into being, uh, what the fuck you're talking about, Kelp? So, so, uh, so you, uh, you uh, this is what Kelp wants you to believe, that using a real name and a fake name may, means you're a liar. There's nothing being, there's nothing uh, uh, about using handles. Using handles is, is, has been common since the ducking CB, CB radio days. Yes, it can still be a cow. CB radio days, everybody used handles, okay? <clears throat> if you were old enough to be using CB radios, if you're using CB radios, guys, you're identified by handles. You never use a real name. If you're using uh, um, shortwave radio, you're using handles with like, I'm, you know, KG1234789, you know. When you're in a boat, you're using a, uh, you're using, hello, bobber. Uh, they call you rubber ducky. Uh, if you're uh, if you're Bobber, you're you're saying I'm Bob the cat. He doesn't use his real name. See, Bobber Bobber is an example of uh, one that's always been smart about this. Bobber's never revealed his real name. 
Yeah, Bob Bird's never revealed his real name. So I'm, I'm, yeah, it's Bob the Cat. So, so, so Bob the Cat has never revealed his real name. He's, he's made. He, actually, I've never seen Bob's face. I've never seen Bob the Cat's face. So I don't actually know what he looks like. So he has an advantage over me because I show my face. He does not. So he's always been smart about that. My cat friend is here, real and private. <laughs> so, so Bob the Cat is one of the few. By the way, it's very hard to be successful on Periscope without showing your face. And there's so many people that uh, you know succeed on here, and they hardly ever show his face, like Lane Two. Uh, has Lane Two ever? Sh I, I guess I've seen her face somewhere, but I haven't seen her face recently. Uh, I've seen Bob's face, but don't know the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh you mean bob the cat's face uh i don't recall ever seeing uh bob the cat's oh i'm not sure i'm not sure i don't recall ever seeing bob the cat's face so and i certainly don't know bob the cat's name so and i never dox bob the cat to say to say hey i need to really find out who bob the cat is no i i don't do that so i i've uh uh, uh bob the cat has a has uh has uh, you know pseudo and a pseudo identity on the internet, and he's very safe doing that. I just want people. I I just want people to have to research a little to learn who I am. Um, so like you know, who's Twist Mint? Okay, that's good. That's excellent. Who's uh, uh, Entire Meyer? Uh, you know who's uh, who's Donnie Murdoch? Is Donnie Murdoch actually Donnie Murdoch? Then we're in trouble here. Okay, who's Huge Bite? Huge Bite. Uh, you know, who's Ben, Ben Spears is probably Ben Spears. So, so really what, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you that it, it does take a bit of work and don't feel like you're lying when you, you create a different identity in the, in the history of man, this is not, it's very common. You, you know, uh, think about all the writers, famous writers who use pen names. Do you know how to gain like 90% privacy online? Yes. By having a pseudo identity. Who is Rob Braxman? I'm Rob Braxman. Fortunately, there's no other Rob Braxman. Uh, I bet there's a, uh, if you see a Rob Braxman on, on Facebook, apparently there is a Rob Braxman on Facebook. It's not me. But somebody, uh, somebody who knows me probably set it up. Okay, eastbound and down. I'm the walrus. There you, there you are. So, so uh, hey, Waypoint24. Uh, uh, there's one on here too. <laughs> yeah it's called me a soccer coach a soccer coach named rob braxton yeah right okay so so anyway uh you have to think about it and don't feel like you're lying when you do it you have to you know say um i have a fake name on all my business documents i'm very serious so so uh anyway on on uh, on uh, on social media how far do you go using a a uh, pen name a pseudo identity uh how far do you go you can go as far as getting a llc let's say uh let's say you want your uh your uh llc let's say you want to uh, have w woke boss as your how about kelp farming 87 let's say you want kelp farming 87 as your legal name well you can do that Set up a corporation with the name Kelp Farming 87. Set it up in Nevada so that you don't have to identify the officers of the corporation. And then you can set up a bank account under the corporate name. And there, there, uh, there you go. And so in my case, as an example, uh, my credit cards are corporate. I have a corporate credit card with the name of my company. Uh, my, my, uh, my real name is not... Uh, uh, published anywhere associated with the with the company and uh, and uh, there's no except for the IRS the IRS has to know who you are I have my mail delivered to a friend five hours away wow it's a lot of trouble so so I have a corporation name and my credit card so uh, for example I have a uh, I have a uh, uh, phone here so where's my uh, my uh, not smartphones. Here's my non-smartphone, right? From my broadcast yesterday. So on this one, I'm using Ting.com as my carrier. 
So I put in a SIM card from Ting.com, which I, I uh, it's not a burner phone. So I, uh, ve- I activated the SIM card online on Ting.com. And it's not my real name. It's not my real name uh, on Ting.com. And then I paid for it with a corporate credit card, which doesn't have my real name. Uh, my address is not on there. There's no address listed on, on Ting.com. So this is not identified. This is not identified. Pretty cool, huh? Now, you probably don't need to go that far, but, uh, you know, I, I, there are people who don't like me. So there are people that, you know, I have to be careful about. So there are corporations especially. I'm not worried about the government. I don't do anything bad. But there are, uh, you want one. There, there, are, uh, there are companies that are, uh, you know, s- saying things about what I say here on, on my broadcast. They say, they're saying, we have to do damage control. Zuck you. What fucking damage control are you going to do? You want one what? You want one of these or one of the, uh, or one without your identity? This is a phone without an identity. Uh, same with my, uh, same with my, uh, Amazon. So I changed my Amazon to a corporate name. Uh, unfortunately they still ship to my home address. So I'm still zucked there. That security right there. You ever work for the feds? No kelp. You work for the law enforcement. I've never worked for the feds. Uh, well, that's not true. I think I had a consulting job with the feds. I had consulting jobs with many feds over the years not related to law enforcement <laughs> but but what define feds but if you say federal government ting yes you need that yeah if you are gonna use ting please use the link on my youtube the flip phone uh, video there's a link to ting there they give me a uh, little uh, referral gift if you uh, use ting so uh, i'd really appreciate it like a little gift to support this program here if you if you're going to use some of the products to talk about to click on the links in in the uh on the broadcast on the uh videos does digital forensics consulting count as working for the feds uh yes depends on who hired you who paid for you so uh, uh let's see when i was when i was younger i was a uh, i was a consultant and i did uh, do consulting work for the uh, uh for nasa and for the uh, uh, Fannie, Fannie Mae, and for for those those entities. So, so because uh, we had a contract with them. So, so in essence, uh, you could say I did work with the Feds, but not in any uh, in any other capacity. <laughs> Certainly not in a law enforcement capacity. Is somebody going to ask me the question if if Brax me has ever received a subpoena for uh, for records? Somebody going to ask me that? Hello, Maga memes. Uh, uh, how about that Mueller report, Maga memes? They have to outsource this. The typical Fed is about as dumb as they come. Uh, uh, so so anyway. Uh, uh, back to back to what what I'm talking about. Back to what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> Maggie meme is like, that's the burning question. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Nothing burger, right? <laughs> or so I've heard. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, v- very uh, very amusing. Deep state in action. Deep state. Deep state in action, and uh, the result of deep state. There you go. There you go. My grandma's pissed that Trump didn't work with Russia. Zuck. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, much uh, to do about nothing. Anyway, uh, uh, keeping us all safe. When the Russian leads to the. Uh, We'll we'll uh, have to put that we'll have to put that into a later discussion here, because uh, I I you know I I do want to allude to that in some way, but perhaps not as part of this discussion. Maybe tomorrow, because you know I I don't want to confuse the issue here, because you know in a general way that was kind of disturbing, what happened what happened with the the Mueller thing, 
it's very disturbing, uh, you know, the, the, the process as it relates to the Fourth Amendment. Doing the work most Americans won't do or their founding fathers. Okay, another scope. Yeah, maybe maybe tomorrow we'll, uh, you know, I'll probably lose viewers. So people who get mad at me will unfollow me from that. But, you know, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So so anyway, so anyway, uh, breaking the identity down to be separate from, from different kinds of social media is critical. And, and a lot of you feel like, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a minor thing that all you have to do is use a different name and, and you're done. The thing is, you actually have to think in your head that these are two separate people. You actually have to be extremely conscious of this. And some of you are just too sheep-like. You say you've got nothing to hide and this is really not important to you. And the thing is, it damages you in the long run. It damages you in, in uh, employment. When people find out about uh, things about your life that uh, you know that I- is is not uh, positive, uh, especially if you're in America. Now, Vijay, who asked the question originally, is likely not in America, but in in America, most of us are completely doxed on uh, Intellius and Spokio and and Axiom and all these different uh, social media aggregators, where so much of our data is on there that if you apply for employment, they will automatically pull all of your social media. And it's just terrible to me that you go to any situation, like an interview for, for a position, and they have their entire social media record about you, and you didn't do your job, y- you, you didn't think about the, the consequences of this until you're applying for the job. There are consequences to being on social media. And some of you making comments here on Periscope and you're not thinking about it and then it gets pulled up in a, in a report from uh, Axiom Intelligence and Spokio. <coughs> so, so it's... Uh, it's uh, um, so, so for some of you that say, I've got nothing to hide, you know, I, you know uh, really? If you understand that the collection of data may go back 25 years, including all emails that you've ever sent, really? 25 years? Are you sure there's nothing there that, you know, could be, uh, you know, would you be as clean as a politician should be? Should be? (laughs) Politicians are not clean. Would you be as clean as a politician can be without paying, paying money to keep them clean? I'm curious, you know, uh, why go through this? Why go through this? And why do you want to feel like you go to social media and then your identity is so attached to your real name that you can't say things that you really feel? Uh, let's say that you, uh, just let's say that you work for Google. Let's say you work for Google. Now, Google is left-wing. I mean, that, that's no secret that Google is left-wing. Let's say you're not left-wing. Let's say that you're on the right. Okay? And then you go on, on social media and you say stuff that is definitely not left-wing. That would ostracize you in the eyes of people who work at Google. So people, your friends are going to go dox you and say, Zuck, look at what this guy's saying on Facebook and so on. And then you start to lose opportunities at Google, and then suddenly you say, "I got to quit here." I, you know, I'm getting the ev- eagle, evil eye from people because I don't believe in the same things they believe in. Why do you need to feel like that? Why did you not just say have a different identity on Periscope so then you can do all of your politics in Periscope without a real name? Do you know how freely you can speak if you don't have to worry about connecting it to your real name? I can't believe all the people who talk politics on Facebook and they do it openly with a real name on it. And it's like, uh, you know, they're good people. You just don't call them names like he. Or d- j- you just don't call them names like he. Or what the Zach are you talking about? Apparently, tr- uh, uh, I'm sure they'd find a parking ticket on you. <laughs> so, so, uh, so anyway. Obviously, there are many, many negatives to being, to getting docs and identified that goes beyond, beyond just you know matching matching social media. I told you that in my case, it was used in a lawsuit. Uh, so, actually, it was my lawsuit. I filed the lawsuit. Okay, so it it was my lawsuit. So, just in general, because I can't 
I, I have a gag order, so I can't really talk about this. But just in general, I had a big lawsuit, and I uh, and I uh, fought some big guns. It's uh, people with money, and uh, and I had to to uh, you know to fight somebody with a lot of resources. And uh, when you fight somebody with a lot of resources, they go search the internet and go find everything about you. And I was just saying to myself. You know, if you're just an ordinary person, they would have found everything you, you ever have said in your life on Facebook, on social media, and everything, and use it against you in court. In my case, not much. Not much. Couldn't find much. Because, you know, I'm one of the early birds in the internet, and I already knew the dangers at the beginning, and so I was aware of it. And so, no, they couldn't really find much. You tell us about a lawsuit, but don't, we don't let me. Uh, kelp, did I not say, Kelp, did I not say gag order? Do you, do you understand what a gag order is, Kelp? <laughs> Unfortunately, you cannot clean. That, that would be a nice industry for me. I mean, I could make money if I, uh, you know, said I can clean up your, your history. How do you clean it? There's no way to clean it. Unfortunately, with the, you know, it, there, there's more money to be made in finding data than it is to to uh rob was waxing on waxing off way before let's let us look it up ourselves uh so anyway so there's so much danger to to uh you know to having s such data available to anyone that can be used for opportunities i'm gonna give just, just give you a very very minor one a very very minor one um, you asked for let's say you're buying life you're you're trying to get life insurance <clears throat> you're trying to get life insurance and one of the questions they raise is are you a smoker and then uh, you know that they probably won't give you you know they'll increase the rate or won't give you the life insurance if you're a smoker so you said are you a smoker and you say no okay then in your mind, you're thinking, well, it's kind of a white lie because, you know, I have a cigar once a year. Okay. But in reality, you know, I don't really once a year. Okay. So I'm not, you know, I, f I don't feel like that smoking is once a year. Okay. Legit. And then the insurance company finds you in a party with a cigar in your hand showing up on social media. Okay, so social media uh, showed that you actually had a cigar in your hand. And they will deny you the insurance. Or you're a professional skydiver. Or just, yeah, it, uh, you know, you're, uh, or you're like to, uh, uh, so honesty isn't good. Uh, they don't. You know, they're not going to grade you by, well, I only do it once in a while. Not going to grade you by, by that. If they see it on there, they say, you lied. Sure, Kelp. <coughs> I, it, yeah, they, you're probably right. You know, you're probably right. But uh, uh, the point of the matter is, I, I'm just saying to you that uh, that's something that you probably didn't intend to be, uh, you know, that in your mind you're justifying that you're not really smoking because it's not like you 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 have a cigar every every uh, every day or every week. You're saying that you're you know if somebody hands you one because somebody had a baby, you're gonna take it, but that you don't make a habit of doing it. And but if it's on social media, it's there as a record that you do do it. Okay, cameras at the store watch the items you buy. Okay, you've teased me again with that lawsuit. So anyway. <clears throat> Uh, the the uh, 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 I've been in many uh, many lawsuits. Uh, uh, Kelp, don't uh, get too excited. I've been in many lawsuits. Very common thing. Okay, so so uh, I hate lawyers. Anybody lawyer here? Sorry, I hate lawyers. 
Hello, we can. Yes, I hate lawyers. Did I ever tell you I hate lawyers? So if there's any lawyers here, I apologize. I don't hate you, but I just hate lawyers. Uh, Kelp really won't want to find out who you are. <laughs> uh, don't try to find out who I am because I will return the favor and find out who you are. Okay, so let's not do that. Okay, so uh, lawyers in general. Uh, you mean you found a good lawyer, uh, Magamim? I could pass the bar, but I'm not into robbing people. Bankers are worse than lawyers. Uh, I don't know. I've never had to deal with a banker. I, I don't, I never asked for a loan from a banker. I'll tell my uncle he's a lawyer. Uh, so, and you're the law enforcement official, right, Kelp? Uh, liver damage happens to younger age than lung damage <laughs> you're like, oh. anyway my my uh, my my point is my point is that you know how j just think about the side effects when in for your for your business you know for people who want to express political beliefs and can't do so because because uh you know let, let's say you uh let's say you have a you run a supermarket. You have a little neighborhood supermarket that has been there forever, and you and you know, and the entire neighborhood goes into your supermarket. What if you went on uh, went on social media and you know became uh, completely bonkers with your side, and it turns out that you're you know completely uh, completely socialist, and then you're like uh, ranting on the internet and. Obviously, you know, a certain number of people are going to go dislike you. And it will actually and obviously reflect because you'll probably be in a newspaper for what you say. And it will obviously reflect in maybe an effect on your business. Okay. Is that smart? Now, what would have happened if you, instead of doing that, you went on the internet and said, well, my name is Maga Memes. That's my name, Maga Memes. I'm not going to use my real name. So what's the consequence of Maga Memes on the internet? As long as Maga Memes doesn't accidentally identify himself or herself on the internet, what's the consequence? So, you know, don't you feel free, Maga Memes? You can say anything you want. And you don't have to fear that somebody's going to go knocking at your door and saying, I didn't like what you said uh, about Hillary. I didn't like what you said about Hillary, so I'm going to go uh, scratch your car up. You know, it's around here, that's not unusual. If you, if you, uh, you know, have an opposite belief to the majority around here, they'll probably scratch up your car. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, that explains it. Mad cow. There were response to things I didn't see in chat, but clears it up. What happened, Justin B? Oh, are you uh, uh, Justin B? You're yeah. Uh, you don't know that we're talking on Periscope. Yeah, there's multiple platforms here. I'm reading comments from Periscope. So it's live, but I think we pay more attention to scope comments. And, no, I just. Uh, pay attention to where the people are commenting. I, I'm reading every comment. So certainly I, I'm uh, reading every comment on YouTube. <clears throat> so maybe Florida. Are you from Florida, Maga Memes? Disinformation, Maga Memes. Disinformation. Use that. That's one of the best tricks in the book. Disinformation. Can you Can you handle it? Can you go can you go on the internet and say yes I'm from Florida my, and actually switch your phone and apps to that time zone and say yes I'm from Florida when I'm actually from California okay uh, can you actually do that for some of you maybe that may be too far it's too inconvenient you're not going to do it I would say 99.999999% uh, of you will not go that far I find people just can't lie that the, the, people have a propensity not to lie that much unless you're a troll. So the, the, most people will keep their, you know, their uh, area code, I mean, they're, sorry, their uh, time zone 
and even state or city uh, openly, that they, they're not, they're scared that they may be inconsistent. They're scared of inconsistency that might show up, so they don't want to lie about that. I have found that historically, that most people will not lie about, you know, most of that. Okay, at least up to the to state, state level and even down to maybe a general area like Southern California. So I, I, don't, I don't think that people like to lie about that. They can't handle it. But I'm going to tell you, why not? So lie about it. And I don't consider it a lie. It's sucking social media, for goodness sakes. This is not like you're, uh, you know, you're in a confessional with your priest. Who does not cares what you do on social media? Does it help to have pseudo-identifiers of different species or gender? I, I don't know what the species you know, unless you're uh, a interdimensional alien from uh, Alex Jones' world, but it's hard to. Uh, it's hard to. I find that it's also hard for people to take a different gender identity. Uh, people are very uh, don't like to be misgendered. People don't like to be misgendered. Michi Hurahara Haru. Uh, not like you're applying for the ZIA. Yeah, I mean, so so what? Why are you afraid to uh, do disinformation on the internet? Am I suggesting that you lie? Zuck, yeah. <laughs> for your safety, for the safety of your family, Zuck, yeah. I told as a woman back in AOL days, Zuck, yeah. Now, if you're going to show your face in Periscope, may not work. <laughs> One of mine is a non-binary unicorn. Uh, I, I, I probably can't do that. I, you know, because well, I can't because I use my face here. I've always used the opposite gender. Uh, yeah, custodian, I can't. I don't really know what your gender is. That, actually, some of you have come here, and I didn't really know. Some of you talked to me in Brax, and that's the only time I realized what your gender was. I actually didn't know. Some of you have, you know, very, uh, you know, very uh, non-gender-like names like Pat. Remember Pat from SNL? So who's Pat? So uh, do binary... I have no idea. Transgenders can... What? Don't say that, Rudy. That will be blocked on... That will cause you to be banned on uh, all social media. Don't say that. <clears throat> the AI seems to choose mostly between two different genders. Female or ninja. I'm an inanimate object. Uh, I, you know, do you have the guts to, uh, do you have the guts to use a pseudo identity? Do you have the guts? Do any of you have the guts? Mo most of you probably don't have the guts. I'm going to say it's, uh, you can be very, you can, you can be very, con who are you talking about, Greg? Go, me? Uh, most of you do not have the guts to lie on the internet. And I'm going to say, what the Zuck, who Zucking cares? This is just a Zucking internet. Okay, it's hard. It's hard to lie or uh, I have a fake identity in real life. It's really hard. Okay. Uh, sometimes friends give up your name, right, Rudy? <laughs> Is it the injured to use your real name? You? Oh, yes, Best by Kiss. Absolutely. That's why Best by Kiss, that's the next topic. When you do your social media accounts, use a different email for social media. Do it now. You can still do it. So let's say you're on Periscope with a, uh, with, uh, you know, a Beth Smith at gmail. I mean, at Beth Smith at gmail.com. Set up a new Gmail and say uh, Periscope Beth at, at uh, gmail.com and use that as your social media. Or even, you know, Beth Social at gmail.com, you know, so you remember it's for social purposes only. Uh, you should use always use a different email than your business email so that there's no connection made. One more thing. Don't connect identities with the same phone number in your social media uh, that has your real name versus the one that does not have your real name. I'll give you a specific example. Facebook, Facebook asks you for two-factor authentication. They said, you cannot go back to your Facebook account unless you give us your phone number. So most of you, not me, even with my fake account on Facebook, 
But many of you said, okay, you want my phone number. I'm going to go give it. Then you use a different name. Let's say you are uh, Beth Smith on Facebook. And then you go on Twitter and you're, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Gold Beth, Gold Beth on Twitter. But you use the same Zucking phone number. Zucked. Facebook sold that phone number, by the way, with your real name on it. So that name and that phone number is now on Hello Lady Liz. So that name, uh, the name and phone number are now matched that phone number. Now, if somebody just uh, has a database of this, which somebody has, they can match your, your names then by phone number. So don't ever do that. Uh, I advise you do what I do, which is get a second phone like this. Cheap one. It has, and then I use ting.com on here uh, with a... Uh, nine dollar a month thing and the only th uh, thing that you use it for hello katie uh the only thing you use it for is for two-factor authentication that's one way of doing it you really have to think about it too late for me too you know it's not too late that's not true unless you're like making millions with your name like the kardashians it's not too late now if you have a billion dollars into it yeah it's too late Kardashians aren't going to change their name now. Their money is tied to it. But uh, why is it too late on Periscope? So instead of, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Katie, you're not using your real name on Periscope, but you're using your real name on Google, then just change it on Google. You, Katie, you're not, you're just change your name on, on Google and, uh, and then uh, let it die natural death and then establish another name for some later on stage. I blame my parents for giving me a real name. <laughs> Won't they just add that from cookies to browser fingerprinting? Uh, if you're on Facebook, yes, it will zuck you. Being on Facebook means that your real name is, is you know, this is the damage that is caused by Facebook that, uh, that, uh, cannot be undone it's it's the, the real name thing on facebook katie this is the thing if you change your name now on uh, google and wipe out that record what will happen is that all of your new trend transitional kind of comments will be would have a different name and it will just make it just a tad more difficult to dox. It will just, you know, increase the work so that a casual doxer will not be able to do it. If somebody tries to do an employment report, they'll have a little bit more difficult time. It won't stop somebody like me, you know, somebody who's an expert. But it'll stop, you know, people who don't know how to dox. So it will be at least some level of protection. Then you can start a completely different name at a later time. Yes, old school 80s Facebook means they want to see. Well, that's exactly how Facebook began. It was like, uh, you know, swipe left, swipe right. They looked at the, the girls and they said, okay, this is this girl a swipe left or swipe right? That's how Facebook started. Okay. <laughs> so my name is on Zuckbook is different and it's still not my real name. But yes, d -Pace, uh, you are, don't, don't say that you're easily matched on Zuckbook by so many ways, including your relatives. Okay. Including your relatives. Uh, a lot of you do this like trick, uh, you know, just to warn you about how little you understand about the internet. Yeah. It was rating site. That's correct. Kel. No, it's in a movie. Uh, if you go to Facebook and have a profile picture of your real face sometime in the past, and then you come back. And say, I don't want my real face on here. So you change your face on Facebook to something new. Unfortunately, the old picture in the profile pic is still on there. Uh, and you actually can't get rid of it. I've actually found, found that. You can easily Google every picture you've ever put in on, on your profile pic on, on Facebook and on Google. It, this is a very easy thing to do. So, so. So if you can be found, if you can be found by some profile pic you've had 10 years ago. So at this point, my only answer is you got to delete the account. There's just no other way. My picture is nowhere on the internet. 
deep pace this is uh you know advice i would give to uh this is advice i would give to to zucking ron waxman ron isn't here so he'll have to watch the replay to get this advice when you send your dick pics on the internet don't put your zucking face on there <laughs> can i change my zuck name on zuck no uh katie no don't bother with that keep it separate because you can't change it. Don't connect your name here to your name on Zuckbook. It's just going to connect. Leave it. And, uh, and delete it at some point. But, uh, you know, if you, if you uh, send your dick pic out without your face, then actually uh, they'd have to keep a database of dick pics. But, uh, they, you know, the, at least there's still facial recognition. <laughs> so that's my advice. That's my advice to Ron. What about my chart profile picture? Okay, what what is a my chart profile picture, Beth? I don't know what a my chart profile picture is. Ew. Yeah, that's my advice to Ron Waxman. So, uh, when you delete your Facebook account, you really you aren't really deleting it. Yes, but the uh, the indexing outside of Facebook stops. If you delete your Facebook pic, your Facebook account the outside world can no longer find you on Facebook. I don't have a doc. I'm a lady. <laughs> Deep Pace, you're the one that confused me. I believe I thought Deep Pace was a man. Yes. I always thought Deep Pace was a man. Char my chart is a portal system between doctor and patient. Uh, my chart is an electronic. Uh, my chart is a competitor of mine. Is that what you're trying to say? Great gold. My chart is a competitor of mine. Who makes it? Who makes my, my chart? Call me D. Okay. So, so see, D Pace is doing a very good job because I don't actually know. I didn't know that D Pace was actually uh, uh, a woman. I did not know that. Okay. So, just goes to show you how valuable that. I mean, that's pretty. It's pretty smart. Because there's without a first name, you can't really, you can't really uh, uh, figure that stuff out. And D Pace has been around a long time in my scopes, and I've never figured it out, never. Now, when you go on your call ins on Periscope, then they'll catch you. Not sure I want to use that call in. <laughs> None of my relatives have pics of me on their Facebook. You, uh, uh, how are you sure? How sure are you, D Pace? So because you know. My, my family comes to my house and uh, uh, because she told me separately. I, I, uh, when did you tell me, D-Pace? Was it on Brax or on, uh, on, tw on Twitter? I can't remember. Any sites you recommend it? Give tips on the latest angles of intrusion from... Yes, Kelp. It's called my channel on YouTube. That's, that's it. The best source. <coughs> Absolutely positive. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, guys. Something that just bugged, bugged the hell out of me and I made a solution for it. I told you I was lady on scope, on scope before. No, I, you told me not on scope. I, I can't remember where. But you told me elsewhere. You told me elsewhere. Uh, it, was it on Brax or on Twitter? I can't remember. But you told me elsewhere. But anyway, uh, my family comes to my house. They start taking pictures of me, and I try to hide my face, but you never know if I'm in the background. And they post it on Zuckbook, okay? And of course, they use their real names on Zuckbook because they have nothing to hide because, you know, they're ducking idiots, okay? Then they borrow my Wi-Fi. They borrow my Wi-Fi. You like clam farming, <laughs> not kelp farming? So they borrow my Wi-Fi. Say, can I use your Wi-Fi? Then they go on their Wi-Fi. Of course, they don't have a sucking VPN. So now their IP address is now matched to Facebook with my IP address, with my picture in the background, which they have already done facial recognition in the past. And they say, oh, we found you. Suck. So what's my solution, guys? Well, I made a new product for this. I made a new software that you can stick to a Raspberry Pi that can have a VPN 
Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi is a VPN. So if somebody uses the Wi-Fi like a guest, they'll automatically be sent to the VPN, Bytes VPN, and so they come out of the VPN side so they don't come out of your house. So from here on, I'm going to put that in my house as the guest network, and no one will be able to, to uh, uh, be able to uh, know the password on my main Wi-Fi. That's going to be invisible because the rest of us here have a VPN. Zuck you, mother zuckers. We got you. Okay? Okay, so I have that. I have that, and I will be selling this. It's running already. I have the software. Uh, and if you already have a Raspberry Pi, uh, then it will already work. Just change the chip. Stick the new chip in there and boot it, and you're ready to go. That's it. Stick the chip in there, put the power supply, plug it into your uh, network, and you're done. So don't need, I don't need to write software for that. Just have a separate network that only routes to VPN. Uh, how do you do that, Justin? You need a, uh, you need a VPN because they will get your IP address. So think, Justin, if you don't have a VPN Wi-Fi, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that without a VPN Wi-Fi? What IP address is going to come out of the other end? Think. You need a special VPN Wi-Fi. And I made it easy because VPN Wi-Fi are kind of expensive. Uh, VPN Wi-Fi are, you know, because you have to buy the software on top of the uh, on top of the Wi-Fi, you're talking you know 250 bucks typically for VPN Wi-Fi, not counting the VPN service. So uh, so mine is simpler. I unplug my Wi-Fi when Wi-Fi family gets near, but they say, well, we want to upload the picture to Zuckbook. So we want to upload the picture to Zuckbook. So they're gonna go with with your exact location because they they don't turn the location off. They upload a picture directly to Zuckbook from your house with your sucking IP address. Zucked. Zucked. You, you, you can't just have an additional access point, Justin. The, you have to route it to the VPN. Do you know how to route this? An average, well, you may know, but the average person know how to route the VPN. You'd have to alter the code to route it to the VPN. You have to pass it through a specific router or route to the VPN only. Yes, my family seems to be trolling me, Mike. Yes. So, so uh, they know how I hate Facebook and they just, I don't care. We have nothing to hide. We got nothing to hide. Well, suck you. Suck you. So, you know, it, so that's my solution. I, I've made a, uh, a uh, VPN uh uh, software. Actually, you can change it to a Tor router to, too. So you can say, I'm going to use it as a Tor router switch. I'm going to use it as a uh, VPN switch. You can use either way you want. And uh, I'll make that, uh, I'm going to sell that software. Let, uh, yeah, so, so no lightning visitors in your house use your, your Wi Fi. That's why I'm going to give them their own, uh, a separate Wi Fi so they don't. You see, you're trying to protect yourself. You have a VPN. You're trying to protect yourself at your house. Then your guests come, take pictures of you, and upload it to the Zaki Internet. The, the thing you're trying to avoid, they're doing it for you. This is how, why people have nothing to hide like Dr. Matthew Vick. Pastor Dr. Matthew Vick. He had nothing to hide. So he's going to go to his family's house, Snapchat, take pictures, 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 pictures. Uploaded. Can I borrow your Wi-Fi? Shh, no VPN. Uploaded. Zuck. Location. Wi-Fi. Sold. Sold. They just sold your data. A lot of you don't understand that they sell the, that location, the data pair of IP address and location. That is being sold. That is such critical information. They can find a lot about a lot of people just from that. So, uh, is your product going to be open? It is already open source. It's it's uh, just a standard. It's not hidden. It's completely. <clears throat> there's no hidden code, and it. it is completely exposed. It's you know, it's just a standard Raspbian uh, Linux on the chip. It, it's completely open. 
not going to publish it though. I mean, it uses open source everything, open source, open VPN, open source Tor, open. But I wrote the the interface. It's actually as an interface. <clears throat> it has a user interface. You, you know, you select menus and all that, just like a like a like a normal router. It has an interface, so you plug it in and you boot to it. You can SSH to it and uh, and change modes and change Wi-Fi passwords and all that. Uh, uh, change your VPN credentials and download profiles and so on. It's it's all in there and it's it's all open. It's all on the chip. So if you're a programmer, then you can you can see it. Of course, you know I wrote it, so it's copyrighted, but it's it's. Uh, that's why it's not open source because I spent all the time configuring it. But it uses all open source uh, open source uh, ingredients. With VPN Wi-Fi, we can double VPN with Byte VPN on our phone, for, for example. Uh, it doesn't help to double VPN, but it does help to double Tor. Going back to Leave It to Beaver days, it 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 doesn't. There's no point doubling a VPN, but you can VPN a Tor. I don't run any proprietary. There's no proprietary software, Justin. Well, I don't know what you mean by proprietary software. I just wrote an interface for it. <clears throat> hey, yes, Joseph. How are you doing, Joseph? Why are you not watching me on YouTube, Joseph? You don't like YouTube anymore. No, there's no proprietary software. D don't buy it, Justin, th th if you're concerned. It's, it's uh, you know... You can buy those, uh, make yourself one, or or buy one from the, from uh, uh, what's the name of the company that sells? Uh, there's a company that sells uh, uh, router VPNs. They, they charge between two fifty to three hundred bucks for a uh, router, a VPN router, Wi-Fi VPN router. So if you already have a Raspberry Pi, then you can get it for cheap. And it's uh, you, you just need a subscription to my VPN. I had a photo shoot today, usually between work, and this is this is this. I'm always packed. You're always packed. Are you packing? You packing, Joseph? <laughs> Are you packing? Are you going shark fishing soon? No. I'm packing. What the uh, when you use a Linux shell is that the same way uh, Crouton works on Google Chromebooks? Uh, Crouton Chrome works and uh, uh, a Chromebook is running Linux. Yes. Yeah. If you are a Chromebook is Linux. So you can actually take a Chromebook and take off the uh, and install Linux over the same Chromebook. I wouldn't buy it. I just find it interesting that your whole show is about Sting Anonymous, but how could I verify what access to your source for the interface? Justin, I told you, you can verify because it's open. Did I not just say that? completely open you can see all the source code everything is on there there's nothing hidden away it's not like there's anything mysterious there you can see all the bash scripts and all the python scripts and everything in there it's all open you can do a ddwrt uh, on a router it's little uh, little you know you have to have a lot of skill though so i thought you said what you work was closed source for or compiled no there's nothing compiled about it I I said specifically that's not no there's nothing compiled it's completely open it's bash scripts and uh, Python and they're all open and it's not you know it's the work is more the configuration than anything I mean it, it all uses all uh, open source ingredients so nothing nothing unusual there you can see what every bash script is doing if it's downloading or whatever it's doing, you can see that. Okay, uh, w DDWRT uh, uh, requires you know the full expensive routers. So in 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 my case, I'm just using a Raspberry Pi, which is obviously cheaper because a Raspberry Pi is only 
50 some bucks. 70 bucks with a nice case. Okay? So instead of buying some expensive router, did it catch? Well, he, you know, didn't you watch the last scope? I, he was looking for, he was asking and saying, what is Treadstone? Scroll up when I get a chance. Hold on. I forgot that I know Zuckbook owns Insta, but but do you have Insta? I'll add. Do you have Insta? Uh, I don't know what you mean. Are you saying uh, are, are you saying you don't like Insta, or you're asking me if Insta if if Instagram is safe? Uh, in theory, I'm gonna give you a theoretical, Joseph. If you've never had Facebook, let's say you started with a brand new account. Let's say you have no Facebook account or you deleted your Facebook account. So you're starting from scratch. If you deleted your Facebook account, so there's nothing to connect it with a new account, you did not use the same phone number and you set up a brand new Instagram account with an alternate identity, a pseudo identity today. Uh, yeah, that's actually, a, you know, will be fine because it's a pseudo identity. The moment you have Facebook, though, then it's no longer a pseudo identity. That's the problem with Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. The moment you put on a Facebook account, they have connected it to using browser fingerprint, fingerprinting, and they've connected the two accounts, the same phone number, you're done. It's no longer pseudo anonymous. You've lost it. This is why Facebook is the enemy of pseudo anonymity. It is the enemy. So uh, you can't really do it. So, uh, I, I find that there's, it's an impossibility to use uh, Instagram with, uh, in a safe way when you have Facebook. Well, the, the thing is, uh, you know, at least delete the Facebook. Delete the Facebook. Uh, uh, or just maintain a, a separate identity for your Instagram and... Uh, and Facebook, separate from YouTube and everything else, just separate out the identity. Oh, you have to decide, you know, what you're going to, if it's only for photography, then don't do anything else but photography. Don't talk to anyone. Don't do anything else. That's not, you know, you have to stick in your mind. What is your identity with this? If, if Joseph is going to be the photographer, then everything you post in all of social media can have the same name, but you're just a photographer. Now, then when you want to come up with a diff different thing, like you want to go, uh, you know, have a different persona on, uh, on Periscope, set up a new account. I've never given FB my phone number. You do not have to give it. Well, they can cancel your account if you don't, they, you don't give it. Zuck and Jack are about to be broken up. Is Jack big enough to be broken up? What are they going to break up with Jack? Periscope? They if they break out Periscope, there will be nobody on this platform. This platform surviving because of Twitter. This platform may not survive if there's no uh, former staff. Just my info out there. Even made campaigns before. Privacy is lost, basically. I'm honest with myself. Yes, Joseph, but if you are, uh, if the Joseph identity has lost privacy, create another identity and then move on with that. Don't just accept that Joseph, the lost cause in privacy, is going to continue on. You know, uh, limit the activities of that so that there's nothing personal about it. You know, don't talk about your vacations, your life, you know, nothing about your personal activity. Uh, if you're going to be uh, remaining on Facebook, look back at your old posts and start deleting anything that has nothing to do with your photography. Just delete it. At least limit what others can see. It, it's not perfect. I know it's actually it's terrible because, you know, Zuckbook uh, will zuck you. Uh, it helps with the disinformation campaign. Yes. Uh, nearly four years later, still have to explain what Periscope is. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, I, uh, I was on the radio and then I said, you know, I'm popular in this app called Periscope. I got, you know, 14,000 people watching me a night. It's like uh, they didn't know. What is Periscope? So I have to say Periscope Twitter. I always have to say Periscope Twitter. So very, very, very frustrating. 
So, uh, um, and I, I really, uh, you know, I, I can't survive on Periscope alone now. So I, I gotta go to YouTube. So, uh, and I've actually gotten some, some new people, some new people here are from YouTube alone. So there's some, some building number of people who are only from YouTube. And I hope that just, uh, just say Zuckbook. Uh, so I hope that just keeps growing. So anyway, uh, uh, for those of you who are not following me on YouTube, uh, you should consider following me on YouTube because I do have all of those videos that I show on YouTube and, uh, and you will certainly learn a lot from those videos. It's a lot quicker than watching two hours of a broadcast. I'm think, thanks for the YouTube follow, by the way. Uh, you're welcome free to laugh now. Thank you for uh, subscribing. Thank you for subscribing to me. Breastfeeding videos. Yep, you can uh, you can go on YouTube and watch your breastfeeding videos or uh, uh, you know any kind of like uh, medical procedures on genitalia. <laughs> you can find that too. Eventually, I I will return to YouTube. My worst privacy breach is Zuck. What did I tell you, Joseph? We are sucked by the people who have nothing to hide. Suck. Well, in my case, you know, I made sure no one in my family is, is doing Zuckbook, direct family. So my, uh, my uh, Zuckbook issues are really more with, uh, with relatives, not direct family. So she's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> So uh, I can't I can't really say nice things. Uh, yes, medical procedures on yes, yes. Hey, yeah, yep. Th there's no uh, censorship on that. It's, it's a medical procedure. So no censorship on medical procedures. Uh, as Twitter said, they will uh, they will censor you for for saying anything against uh, you know a. A group of people because they'll consider that hate but no there's no filtering or porn is not <laughs> porn is completely open on Twitter yeah uh, no problem with porn on Twitter Twitter you know that's their values hate is for horses that's the value of Twitter they say well you know we, we're gonna distinguish you know what's good for society I guess porn is good for society but free speech is not They've, that's what Twitter decided for you. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, porn is good for society. Showing videos of evil. No, we don't want to show you that because there's no evil in the world. Doesn't exist. So, anyway. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, you can ask me uh, more. If you have if questions come up on pseudo-anonymity, uh, this is a very, very complex problem. You, you can, uh, so I can upload. Yeah, you're right, Joseph, you can. Yeah, you can. Some have, uh, uh, there was this follower of mine and I looked and the profile picture was a dick pic. <laughs> and I didn't block the guy. His profile pic, he changed it to a dick pic. And it's like, hmm, this is, uh, you know, Apparently to Twitter this is a, this is cool. So okay. We'll leave that alone. Okay, that I guess if they think it's not a problem, it's not a problem. So yep, that's right. So um Periscope too. They I don't can I do that on Periscope? Uh that will throw them off my troll. Anyway, uh I I do have some, you know, I I do want to I do want to talk about this Mueller thing. So we'll leave that for tomorrow. I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to talk about the Mueller thing because, you know, it's so politically, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, like a spark of a, you know, to even bring it up will, will bring a lot, of, uh, a lot of hatred on me. But it is what it is, right? 
it is what it is. You know, I can't like, uh, do I need to like, uh, you know, walk on uh, tiptoes here because some, uh, some uh, are in agreement with the Mueller report and some are not. We don't even know what the report is. So I don't know. I will uh, those of you uh, on the left get at, mad at me for, for uh, discussing it? I want to talk about it in relation to uh, the uh, the uh, um, f the FISA thing, because as you know, the uh, the uh, uh, whole Mueller report was based on the Steele dossier, and and FISA and FISA itself is uh, was formed, you know, by the uh, Patriot Act. As a way to get around the Fourth Amendment, and which is very distressing to 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 uh, to me, and to many people, with the exclusion of Kelp, Kelp is the only one that seems to think it's okay to not have the Fourth Amendment. So, uh, so anyway, I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, I feel like the outcome of the probe puts liberals into damage control mode. Yeah, but that's uh, you know it, there's a bigger picture here, politics aside. That you know this shows what what you can trigger with this. This whole thing was triggered by uh, uh, this whole thing was triggered by you know a dossier, and it turned into this whole thing for several years of you know of a uh, of a. Uh, collusion investigation and uh, e even I was and even I was telling you that I don't actually believe based on the data that the uh, yeah that I don't actually believe that the uh, Hillary emails were actually taken by Russians I don't actually believe that so uh, Maybe I need to rehash that with some of you so you can see where I stand on that. It, it just the factual story just doesn't work out. Uh, I, it, it's it's almost like there's a narrative made to make it work and fit. And now that this came out, that there's uh, that the collusion thing is nothing. Then, then what the uh, what this you can now backtrack into the whole story of the Russian collusion and then all the way to the to the. Uh, the Obama statement that it was the Russians that hacked the, uh, uh, yeah, Guccifer too and all that. But the fact of the matter is, is, if you look at the actual proof that they have, it's kind of, you know, there's some iffy things on there. There's some iffy things on there. So, so I don't know. And some people say, well, you know, it's uh, Guccifer is, you know, definitely Russian, so... Because uh, and then they gave the reasons for why they think Guccifer was actually Russian. So anyway, um, let's talk about it. <clears throat> let's talk about it tomorrow. Because I, I want because it's it's kind of a example of how you can abuse abuse power, and this it troubles me that we're so gullible that we react to this stuff in the news, and it just troubles me that we you know nobody can pause and say. Can you like look at this from a non-political point of view and just examine for a moment? And that's what I want to do. That what that's what I want to do. And I know people will hate me for doing that. I'm gonna get a lot of haters. So I've already told you my stance. I'm kind of in the middle. Okay, I'm I'm in the middle. I'm I tend to be more libertarian than anything. One should ask more questions. I, I tend to be more libertarian, and, and uh, Alan Dershowitz called himself a civil civil libertarian. Alan Dershowitz is a Democrat, but he said he calls himself a civil libertarian. And I said, okay, that sounds uh, reasonable. I guess I can call myself a... I, I don't know if I can call myself a civil libertarian because he's using it in kind of a legal way. And uh, I'm not a lawyer, so... So, if you're asking me in terms of law, I don't know. But in terms of uh, of the effect on our lives and the Fourth Amendment and so on, I I actually uh, believe that. So I, you know. So maybe I'll express my opinion on it. 
uh, I think it's some, in some way my grandma would have handled the emails. Read the indictments. Read the indictments. Yeah, what about the indictments? Was there any collusion, collusion indictment? No. Uh, class homework for tomorrow. Read the Constitution and Amendments. Take it the same way my grandma would. Uh, yeah, so there's the, so uh, anyway, so uh, in any case, uh, you know, I, I, I want to talk about it from a civil libertarianism point of view, not politics. Bad thing is when you have someone claim to be libertarian but try to drag the party down. Yeah, the libertarian is not, it's not a uh, party in itself, so... Okay, a libertarian not a party himself. Like Alan Dershowitz calls himself a civil libertarian and he's actually a Democrat. Do you have anonymous social media accounts? <laughs> Obviously, yes. Lou Skywalker. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> That's what this whole scope was. Yes, I have many. I have many. Okay, many, many, many. Uh, so does that answer your question? Sorry, I'm late. Yes, so many. Yes, uh, uh, this is one. This me. You have one here. Okay, I am Rob the Brax Man, last second man. Yes, I am Rob the Brax Man because I have Brax dot me. Okay. Braxman is not my last name. <laughs> Should be uh apparently that's not obvious, so I'm make making sure that is obvious. Braxman is not the same as Braxman. Yes, I am the Brax man. That is correct. Every female I've talked to about that is it is far more very that the video should not exist. They say wipe it from the face of the earth. I ask why they say they don't want to see it. Well, they don't have to see it. Who said they have to see it? That uh, mad cow. They shouldn't see it. But they're saying uh, journalists shouldn't see it. Uh, researchers shouldn't see it. Uh, broadcasters like me shouldn't see it. People who talk on the internet shouldn't see it. Uh, then you are zucked up. Then you're zucking censor. We can talk about that tomorrow too. Save up energy. We're going to talk about that because that will make me angry. Let's let, let's make tomorrow semi-political. Okay, we'll talk about this this kind of stuff. Some of these political kind of they have political consequences. Some of these statements. So you know, some people will not like that. But you know, let's make that for tomorrow. We're not going to go affect the scope tonight. We'll keep this. Uh, Keep this kind of straight tonight, and then we'll go into that tomorrow. So we'll, we'll, you know, I'll anger some people, but what the suck? There's more out there, but it's all just a speck. Thank you for speaking out, Tubo, Tubo Riqua. Thank you for speaking out. So anyway, uh, watch me. Uh, controversy, well, not, you also lose viewership. You also lose viewership. Okay, we'll do that, Ron, tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to sign off, Ron. Thanks for hey Ron, you you'll probably get me some additional viewers. Maybe I'll maybe with your uh, sharing of my scope, my broadcast, you will actually bring my number up to an extra hundred. <laughs> maybe I'll reach maybe I'll reach seven hundred viewers with your uh, sharing, Ron. Thank you. I missed the scope. Yeah, you you. I I I gave a tip. Uh, I will repeat the tip for you, Ron, that I mentioned in the scope before I say good night, Ron. I give you the tip I said. When you send out your dick pics on the internet, don't include your face. <laughs> there's my there's my pseudo anonymity tip. Dick pics, no face. Okay? Dick pics, no face. So then when you see a dick pic uh, from Ron, you say, "Hmm. Is that really Ron?" <laughs> He can pick one from uh, any uh, porn star and say, that's me. Never include face. Never, vaginas, no, yes, no face. 
No face. <laughs> okay. Good night. Good night, folks. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Again, tomorrow will be a little bit more uh, politically tainted. So we'll talk tomorrow. <laughs> it is, Ron? Okay. Okay. So good night, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.